Yes, I shall save. Um, so I don't have a picture of Sportsman, but what I'm going to do I mean, it's also in, like, the fact that he thinks he's very composed. He's not a composed man, but he tricks people into thinking it. Hmm. Let's just do properties, and I'm going to say sports man. And... There we go. That should, there we go. That's our, there, there's our suspect. Honestly, yeah, he is a nerd. I'm like, get wrecked, Edgeworth. What is with that prosecutor? I can't believe how rude he was. It was unbelievable. Please maintain your professionalism, detective. I'm gonna find some real solid, solid evidence proving Maggie's innocence. You'll see, sir. But we've been kicked out of the crime scene, sir. T true. So then, what now? Looks like my life's fallen into yet another gigantic ditch. So, my question is, um... How does this fit into the whole, um, like, third game? Because <clears throat> this seems like Detective Gumshoe and Maggie's relationship is getting patched up here. But we know that also it was seen as kind of rocky in the third game. So, <clears throat> I I'm curious how that fits in. Like, did they kind of just ignore that? Or, like, no, their relationship's still bad. Or, like, do they kind of work it all together? Do not despair, Miss Bird. We can overcome this as well. <coughs> there are many other places and things we should be looking into anyway. Eh? Really, sir? For example, this hallway. The linchpin of his argument against Miss Bird is related to the master key. In that case, this hallway is the perfect place to look for more information. Regarding the mystery surrounding my door. We're gonna find like a lock pin or something. Lock pick. And we're gonna be like, someone broke in. Also, I might need to get some water soon. Ah, uh, yes, of course. The basketball. Why is there a basketball in the hallway? What is a basketball doing here? That's Mr. Portman's prized possession, sir. Well, he doesn't treat it with much care if he left it in the hallway. <laughs> I heard he also plays soccer, dodgeball, and even tennis. And not a single one of those sports is suitable to be played in a hallway. I mean, he made it work. Look at this. No, it's Winston. My enemy. What is a basketball hoop doing here? Hey, didn't this used to be just outside next to the building a long time ago? So when and why was it moved indoors? I don't remember exactly, but I saw one of the officers drag it up here recently. Drag it? I heard it wouldn't fit in the elevator, so the poor guy had to bring it himself. Ouch. All the way up to the 12th floor. Oh, I hate Portsman. We're gonna have a bourgeoisie revolt against him specifically. It looks like you're in quite the pinch, Mr. Edgeworth. To be sure, a murderer is within the walls of the prosecutor's office is no trifling matter. We must find, apprehend, and punish the killer accordingly post-haste. I mean, like, <laughs> this isn't the first time for that either. People die within these sorts of places all the time, it seems like. Sounds like you got a messy case on your hands. 
If you ever feel lost or need some advice, my door is only open. No one needs your advice, Winston. Go back to your... your sad, pathetic room. How gracious. I will keep your offer in mind. Who is this guy again? I know him all too well. Is everything all right? Yes, sir. If you must know, I weighed myself this morning, and I'm finally at 154 pounds. Congratulations. But I was asking about this hallway and this room. Oh, everything's okay, sir. A word of avo advice. Say, stay focused, or you may start to lose even more weight. Examine this office. It's going to be the prosecutor postman's. Okay, so this takes place after the third game. Okay, so that's why she's not like completely upset at him. Okay, that that explains it. And that's good, she got a new job. Congrats for her. That also means that Phoenix and Edgeworth's relationship is gonna be cool. Nice. Mm. Is this before or after Phoenix loses his badge? If you know. Um, 1203, 1203. Hey Maggie, whose room is this again? It's Mr. Portsman's, sir. So he's my new neighbor, I see. I suppose he moved in while I was overseas. Talk to me, Maggie. I was wondering if I may speak for you a bit concerning this case. I've always been a big f fan of the courtroom, but this, this is like a dream, a dream where I'm being cross-examined by the Miles Edgeworth. I can't let this chance pass me by. I must remember to ask her about the master key. Oh yeah, because her case is all dealt with some other prosecutor. <laughs> I should jog her memory by showing my notes to her through the present button. Uh, the victim? Okay, so both are just before Phoenix loses his badge. Got it. Have you ever met the victim before? Well, I've seen him a couple of times before. Wow, that is a short span of time. 11 days. I like to imagine, like, Edgeworth and Phoenix get some coffee, and he's like, yeah, you know, I'm really excited, um, got some upcoming cases, and Edgeworth's like, yeah, you know, good, that's awesome, I'm glad everything stressful has been sorted out, and then flash forward 11 days, and Edgeworth's just sitting there like, oh my goodness, what has happened? I, I feel like Edgeworth would have, like, been on Phoenix's side, though. He, he would have he would have supported Phoenix. Well, I've seen him a couple of times before. When I had to go to Mr. Portman's office. Mr. Faith was always playing basketball with Mr. Portman, sir. That sounds like fun. Just once, I'd have loved to play with them. It sounds fun, but the only person ever taken a shot was Mr. Portman. Oh, he's a jerk in basketball, too. All Mr. Faith ever did was pass him the ball, sir. On second thought, I don't think I'd have fit in at all with them. Yeah. Miss Maggie Bird, correct? Okay, you find out in Dual Destinies that Edgeworth was on his side? I mean, it only makes sense. They're like... I mean, after the trilogy, I would have been absolutely flabbergasted if Edgeworth wasn't. Miss Maggie Bird, correct? I take it that you are an acquaintance of the detective? She was under my supervision back when she was still on the force, sir. One day, she got caught up in a murder and things started going downhill, so she quit. Uh-oh. Saying that all my, all the people watching are dropping out, and on like the Twitch one, but that doesn't make sense. 
Um, but I owe a lot to Detective Gumshoe for introducing me to my current employer. Or so I thought until a few hours ago. Right before I was about to clock out for the night. You got caught up in this whirlwind of a case, correct? <clears throat> and don't worry. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Ding. Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor apartment... Ninth floor of my apartment building. Yikes! I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of food. Yikes! I failed in almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. And now, I even managed to be named a criminal, just when I've become a security guard. I feel so bad for her. That's a lot to go through in one t lifetime. This is like um, in Danganronpa again, when Nagito is like, yes, I am blessed with extreme luck, and also here's all the awful things that might have happened in my lifetime. Or might not have, you know. Who knows? Um, yeah, it says I have one viewer, but that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Since I'm watching it to monitor the chat as well. Uh, I know, and just when I thought I had finally found my happiness, I wind up getting you and Detective Gumshoe involved in my bad luck. You don't need to worry about me, Miss Bird, nor do you need to worry about yourself. I will solve this case and prove your innocence. All I ask in return is for your cooperation. Yes, sir, Mr. Edgeworth. You can count on me. I'll do all I can to help. Alright. Let's see if there's anything she can tell us about. I want to hear more about this master key. <gasps> Wait. My badge. So when did you discover the master key was missing? By the time I realized it, I think it was about 1am, sir. And I noticed it was back at around 2.30 a.m. It was just sitting there on the ledge where the secu sec security room's reception window is. But I'm sure that between those two times, it was not gone. It was not just gone, but stolen, sir. My logic. Why is such an important key stored in such an insecure place? It's a really self-conscious place. It needs a little bit more, um, compliments in its life. Uh, it's not like that, sir. We always keep the key further inside the room, away from the window. Always, you say? Except for this time, correct? Well, I admit that was a bit careless, but I had my reasons. I left it out because I was sort of using it at the time. It was after I had used it that I left it sitting out on the ledge. She used the master key? Well, I want to hear about what you used it for. What did you mean by you used the master key? Oh, I had to use it to open the door for this prosecutor who had forgotten his key. It's gonna be Portsman. Oh, I like the hat, too. I mean, it's my job as a security guard, right? Ah. What is it? That's right. I just remembered. The prosecutor her for who forgot his key was Portsman. It's Portsman. It was Mr. Portsman, sir. See, it's Portsman. What? Please tell me more, Miss Bird. Quickly. It was around 12 a.m. Mr. Portsman had forgotten his office key, so he came down to, to security, sir. And that's when you loaned him the master key? No way. It's against regulations to loan the master key out to anyone. I walked with Mr. Portsman to his office and opened the door for him personally, sir. I see. And then, what happened after that? Well... He called for me to, to come close up his office as he was leaving to go home. 
That was around 1.30 a.m., I think. So, in summary, for the sake of one forgetful prosecutor, you used the master key twice tonight. Talk about suspicious. I doubt you can say you've never left your keys at home, detective. I think this calls for a thorough examination of Mr. Portsman's door. And, of course, we need to present our most important evidence. That's a prosecutor's badge, isn't it? It proves that you're really a prosecutor. Interesting. Despite all appearances, she seems to know more than Gumshoe. With that badge, even I could be a professional prosecutor. Sir, may I please try that on? Just for a little bit. I don't think that would be a very good idea, do you? I guess not. On second thought, they're actually on the same level. <laughs> they're birds of a feather, you could say. Alright. Let me Game Boy advance my way over to this door. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Uh, probably the key area is gonna be interesting. The door is locked tight. <laughs> I bet the old credit card trick wouldn't work here, huh, Edworth? The credit card trick works for so many things. For years, I didn't have a house key because I used a credit card. <laughs> Which probably says a lot about me. <laughs> this is the office of a high prosecutor detective. These doors would be pretty inefficient if the average cat burglar could get through them. <laughs> I mean, it was so easy. It, like, it, it, it was probably concerning, but it was so easy. It was so much more convenient than having a key. <laughs> Aha! So I guess only a great cat burglar could get in. That must be who our culprit is. Might I advise you to return that conclusion to whatever pawn shop you brought it from? Uh, that's interesting. Let me examine that <laughs> that hoop. It's Mr. Portman's per personal basketball hoop. I can't believe he put something like this in the hallway of a prosecutor's office. But you know, it's actually pretty useful, sir. I've been gotten lost trying to get to your office since it's been here. How long have I had the same office, and yet you still manage to get lost? Give me logic. See if there's any logic I can do. One am. Oh wait. This is confusing. Because it was missing from 1 a.m. until 2.30. And then that says it was used at 1.30. Yeah. Miss Bird, I'm afraid there's a flaw in your story. What? No way, pal. I mean, sir. Oh, she's mimicking gumshoe now. <laughs> you said that you locked up Mr. Portman's office at 1.30 a.m., correct? However, the master key had already been stolen at that time. Wow, nothing gets by you, Mr. Edgeworth. You saw through that contradiction like a pro. I had totally forgot all about that, but thanks to you, I remember it now. You're right. It was around that very time that I realized the master key was missing. And? Well, I'm a security guard, sir. I couldn't just admit to losing the master key, could I? So I... I pretended to lock up his room, sir. You pretended? <laughs> yeah, I used my house key and made it look like I was locking up, sir. So in actuality, you never did relock the door then. Well, I thought maybe I could go lock it after I found the key. Come to think of it, the door still hasn't been locked properly. <laughs> Interesting. 
Is it locked now? The door is locked tight. Okay. So that's a contradiction that shows somehow either Portsman had the key or he stole the master key. Probably that he actually had his own key. <clears throat> a contradiction. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Eureka! There's a contradiction here between reality and the evidence. If what Miss Bird has said is true, then why is this door locked? You know, this might be the key to find out what happened with the master key. <laughs> huh, you know, you're right. Miss Bird, are you sure you didn't relock this door? I'm certain of it, sir. <laughs> and maybe you could say that uh, Miss Bird has accused of murder most foul. <laughs> Bad joke, sorry. And I don't think Miss P Mr. Portsman noticed it himself that I hadn't. Which means, what, sir? <laughs> Thank you, Rose, for booing me. But I'm right. <laughs> it either means that he actually does have the key to his office, or that the door Miss Bird opened wasn't this one at all, but a completely different one. She opened a different door? But how can you prove that? <laughs> There's an easy way to find out. All we need to do is... We need to examine these. Mm. Well, we don't have prints on the master key and that wouldn't show us anything. Uh, prints on the number plate. Oh man, the number plates got switched. Where have I seen this before? I'm gonna say that, yeah. It's a DR plot twist. What a classic. The prints on the number plate. They will tell us all that we need to know. Everything? Really? Like what, sir? Oh wait, that was- sorry, I was jumping the shark, but... Whoops. Oof. Was that supposed to be a joke to cheer me up, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> yes, that's it. It totally was a mistake. <laughs> I love him, he's such a nerd. Now then, we should go back to doing what we need to do, and that is... Fixing my mistake. Okay, it is the prince on the doorknob, because we're gonna see which handle she grabbed. The prince on the doorknob will tell us everything. Hey you! Yeah you, pal! Do us a favor and see what you can lift from this, okay? So, what did you find out? There's no need for such belligerent nostril flaring, detective. Sir, I have found only Miss Mr. Portsman and Mr. Faith's prints on this doorknob, which means she didn't touch it. She just did not touch that doorknob, which is probably good because I I'm assuming Portsman has touched it with his sweaty, nasty athlete hands. And you don't want to touch a sweaty doorknob. That's awful. So only two people's prints were found on this, huh? That's pretty decisive. Huh? I'm lost, sir. Thinking logically, a certain other person's prints should be on this knob as well. Now then, whose prints should also be on this doorknob? Maggie's. That also explains why our door was unlocked when we got here. Don't you find it odd that the prints of the person who unlocked the door are absent? You mean... Yes. The door that Miss Bird opened could not have been this one, but a different one. That was probably also part of Portsman's plan, because when we had when we would have had to open it, we would have had the key on us. But because we because Maggie didn't lock the door, we could get in without our key. <clears throat> yes, the door that Miss Bird opened could not have been this one, but a different one. Who are all these people in that transition scene? 
I want to know them. Hmm. What have we here? See you soon, Rose. Hope you have a safe trip. And I am enjoying the game so far. So, good start. <laughs> I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Well, that's suspicious right there. What is this? Looks like a scrap of paper. I'll get it, sir. Let's see. Oh, there's something written on it. I brought the three pieces of evidence by, just like we talked about on the phone. But it looks like you're out. Guess I'll catch up to you later. Buddy. Oh no, he's not undercover. He just literally called Jim by the by the athlete man. Portsman. Yeah, and it's for Mr. Portsman. Is this basketball property of Mr. Portsman? Yes, sir. He's always ready for a match. Basketball, soccer, dodgeball, tennis. It doesn't matter what sport it is, he's game. Although, I think it would be a little hard to play at tennis with this ball. Ho ho. That isn't the point you should be focusing on, detective. You're right, sir. Now I know what I should be focusing on. Bad, Mr. Portsman. Someone should teach him to clean his toys up when he's done playing. <sighs> I think we've reached the end of this conversation. Hmm. Hmm. What's this? Oh, it looks like it's moved out of place. What are you looking at, sir? Oh, hey. How about a game? That's okay, detective. I just think I found I just found the position of this hoop to be a little off. We're gonna now prove that this was also moved to further trick Maggie. Hey, you're right, sir. I guess it shifted when someone made a seriously sweet slam dunk. The positioning of the hoop is definitely unnatural. I'd better take note of this. Basketball hoop data jotted. All right. Um, I wonder if now we can logic anything. Uh, well, guess I'll look. Logic. Files in disarray. No, I don't have anything else I can logic. So. Yeah, let's move back to my door and maybe my door will have another hoop spot. Examine my doorknob. I don't see any signs of forced entry. And according to the guard, no signs that the lock was picked either, sir. Meaning that the door was really was opened with a key so it was probably that buddy walked in on portsman while he was um while portsman was trying to steal the files hmm did you happen to ask if any prints were lifted from the doorknob apparently the doorknob's clean as a whistle wiped they think whoever, whoever this thief is they did a good job of not leaving any clues behind. One, two, oh, two. These four numbers on a number plate alone proclaim this to be my office. Whoops. Hey, these number plates slide right out, sir. They have to be able to take the plate off when a room becomes vacant, you know. Although, the idea that it could be so easily removed is kind of, kind of suspicious, ain't it? Like someone switched out our displays. Uh, can I look down? 
Maybe now I can investigate the other guy's nameplate. Let me see the numbers. Never hurts to take another look. Room 1202. I take it this is Mr. Portsman's office? Yeah, you can't mistake it because of the basketball hoop, sir. Oh, that reminds me. Mr. Portsman had actually wanted room 1202 really badly. But since you are already occupying it, Mr. Edgeworth, we put him next door, sir. So why was Mr. Portsman so particular about getting room 1202? I'm not sure. But I bet it's something, it's because of something like his birthday is December 2nd. Yep, that's gotta be it. I can't think of another reason why. That's not it. I can think of at least three. Bah, why am I even wasting time thinking about this? Because I think he switched our rooms. But I don't know how to check out the floor next to my room. Um, examine the chair. Oh, I won't rest until I, and I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. And that looks pretty suspicious. Hmm. It's, oh, it's the file. Isn't this that missing O-series file, sir? No doubt about it. The bloody letters mark it clear as day. There seems to be a few pages missing. Our thief only took what was necessary and left the rest behind. Um, oh, I think it's three files. Three files might be missing. So what are these zero files about, sir? I, I guess they've got, a, they've got something worth stealing in them, huh? Not particularly. It's just a collection of court case files. However, the cases within these files are not mine. <clears throat> huh? They belong to the high prosecutor that used to occupy my current office, Lana Sky. I have my reasons, but let's just say I was charged with keeping them as they were. Then that means the thief must have also wanted the files for a specific reason, right? It would seem so. Only the pages related to that case were from 10 years ago are missing. I wonder why anyone would care about such an old case. Cause they always care about an old case. It's always we gotta right the wrongs of how the court system failed someone in the past. Oh, that completes it? I'm not gonna look for the being moved around? <laughs> Poking around in this hallway has actually paid off quite handsomely. Huh. Ha how so, sir? In a variety of different ways. I think it's time we had a little chat. With the real culprit of this case. You know who the killer is? Wow, Mr. Edgeworth. As long as my logic is sound, then yes. The master behind, behind this murder is none other than Mr. Pots Portsman. What? Mr. Portsman? I knew it. That's exactly what my logic senses were telling me too. I suspect it was him from the instant he accused Maggie of being the killer, sir. That is anything but logical. Lady and gentlemen, prepare yourselves. Come what may, it's time to knock on Truth's door. March 14th, 512 AM, High Prosecutor's Office, Room 1202. Mr. Portsman, I finished processing the bloody letter, sir. All right, let me take a gander at it. Pass it here. Oh, look at that catch. That's sports. Okay, looking good. You there, take care of this. Oh man, he's gonna sports some more. 
Wow! Oh no, his words failed. Well, if it isn't Detective Gumshoe. End of the line for you, Portspin. We've got you now. Call off your dog, Mr. Edgeworth. Is this some kind of joke? It's no joke. We know, Mr. Jacques Portsman, that you are the guilty party in this case. He's been accused. Um, Jacques, more like, Jacques you of crimes. <laughs> that was so bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you must be pretty upset. Getting chased out of your own room? I'd be mad too. So I guess you can stay. If you promise to stay out of our way. You intend to hide your crime under the guise of a prosecutor doing his job? Hmph. I can see right through the unsightly paper-thin mask you wear upon your cowl. <laughs> you got his thesaurus out. Haha. <laughs> Who'd ever thought it would come to this? Actually, come to think of it, your, menfer, your mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? A coward. Gasp. The legendary prosecutor who never lost a single case for 40 long years. But there is always this incessant chatter about forged evidence with that guy. really teaches me that I've got to stay out on the lookout for false accusations, you hear? Honestly, this is why Edgeworth would totally be on Phoenix's side. Like, he would know what it's like to be accused of deliberately trying to use false evidence. They're such bros. Are you done trying to play mind games with me? Because they won't work. The only thing you should be using that mouth of yours for now is explaining yourself. <clears throat> oh, that, although that too will only dig your hole deeper. Either way, your game is up. We're about to checkmate him. Well, aren't we full of ourselves? Even though you have yet to prove anything, 